Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Andy Mouse, and I'm the director and CEO of Plains Art Museum in Fargo. Um, welcome to a series of brief conversations intended to provide hope, inspiration, and guidance during this time of crisis. We are hosting these conversations as part of the museum's recognition of Giving Tuesday, which is a global giving, a global day recognizing the importance of giving and generosity. Uh, people always turn to the arts when faced with a crisis, and it is our hope that these conversations will help help us get through this together with a little peace of mind. So with that, we're going to start off with a brief quote, and this one is anonymous. Generosity is the most outward expression of an inner attitude of compassion. And I like that uh, quote particularly for this conversation um, because we're going to be talking about the needs of our inner self. Um, and we're very, very fortunate to have um, an educated and trained art therapist with us today. Um, welcome, Josie Stromseth. Um, we really appreciate that you've taken a few minutes to help us um, navigate something that I think we haven't navigated before, um, at least not in my lifetime, certainly in some people's lifetime. But you've got to go back quite a ways before we shut down the entire country um, in response to a pandemic. Um, so before we begin, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, both personally and professionally, so we can get to know you a little bit. Okay. Um, well, I'm Josie Stromseth, like you said. I grew up in South Dakota, and I went to college after high school in Moorhead at MSUM and got my BFA in um, fine arts and emphasis in printmaking. Um, and I kind of had done some research in high school about art therapy. Um, and I kind of went on some detours on the way, but I ended up going to graduate school in Norfolk, Virginia for at Eastern Virginia Medical School and got my master's in art therapy and mental health counseling, as they call it. Um, and I have been working in that field in many different capacities for um, about seven years now. Um, and I, I don't know, I've worked at a lot of different kinds of places. I've worked at um, residential facilities for youth offenders. I've worked with uh, two to six year olds uh, and their parents doing um, emotional regulation and parenting, family um, care and relationship building. Um, I've worked in schools, I've worked um, at domestic abuse centers, and mostly recently um, in January I actually just quit my art therapy job at, at the hospital here in Minneapolis, I was doing art therapy at a children's day treatment for um, seven to 12 year olds. Okay. Um, doing groups and um, this kind of emergency situation, they're coming straight out of the emergency department and never really having any kind of mental health um, or like body awareness um, care before. And so a lot of kind of ground up basic skill building there. Sure. Um, but most currently, I, uh, I quit my job because I was going to go do some wolfing, some uh, organic farming sustainability projects. <laughs> um, and then the coronavirus happened. So I've come back to that. And so it's just a little bit strange to kind of get back on any kind of train that might be happening. Um, so sure. my it's a little bit funny at this point, but who knows what will happen. <laughs> it is. Well, you know, food supply is also an important issue um, <laughs> yeah. we're all right now, as is our uh, therapeutic needs. So you're touching both bases. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, with that, so I think our therapy might be new for some people. Um, so just not knowing like the nuance of it, what would you consider your areas of, of expertise? Yeah. Um, well, art therapy can look different for a lot of different art therapists working in the field. Um, but I, um, 
I kind of, I think therapists and anybody working with people should kind of tailor to their own interests and like areas that make sense for them. And I have a lot of, um, I've done a lot of work in recognizing archetypes and symbols and body um, connectedness and so and trauma through all of that um, and sort sort of um, using my own uh, family <laughs> situation as a means of my own healing and like how that offers help to other people. Um, so. A lot of the work that I do is a lot of um, experiential and um, sure. in the moment recognition of how you're reacting and reflecting to what's being made, um, whether you're noticing what kinds of supplies you want to use. Are you trying to use, you know, pencils and erasers because you're wanting some control and how you're project turns out and you want to be able to erase any mistakes that happen or are you using paint that's really liquidy maybe watercolors and it just is flowing everywhere maybe it's dripping off your page um, that might be a sign that maybe a lot of emotions are kind of going all over the place there's not a lot of boundaries or like holding of your feelings, um, or maybe you're just feeling not recognized in some way, um, or there's just too much feeling overwhelmed. Um, so just like uh, knowing a lot about how materials and different processes can affect you and also how um, you intuitively interact with the art materials and mediums that you have. What are you naturally gravitated towards? And sort of uh, every person, um, every person could use the same material and have a different interaction with it. You know, um, it could be recognized as positive or negative, um, but I don't necessarily think that's important. It's more or less, um, can you not give yourself a judgment about how something is supposed to turn out? Um, Art therapy is not necessarily about um, the product. It's more about the process um, that that's way. Really, that's really interesting. Our, uh, you know, we, we also have a conversation with our director of education and social engagement, Mitha Clater. And mm -hmm. when I asked her, what, what is her advice for someone who has never made anything um, necessarily uh, or never made anything artfully or intentionally? And mm -hmm. she don't worry about the product, just, um, just commit to working on a process. Yep. And that was really interesting because, um, you know, some of what you're saying too, as an artist myself, thinking about that, that leap from drawing to painting is a, yeah. is a difficult leap for, it was for me anyway, probably says something about my need to uh, <laughs> control or um, erase mistakes, right? Uh, I think that's really fascinating on a psychological level. Um, but thinking about that process and how it can help us just get lost in something where it's actually, it's really mindful, but at the same time, you know, you're, you're in your own space, right? You're not necessarily um, in, in the same space you were uh, before you started that creative process. So I think yeah. that's in and of itself um, therapeutic, but of course, being guided by someone like you, you have that um, additional, um, uh, intentionality behind the health benefit to the to the dialogue. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, there's just a. But uh, I mean, these are things that people kind of intuitively know if they create at all in their life. Um, but there's like been a lot of research done, and so I kind of know some of that stuff about like what's actually happening with your brain and your body when you're having that creative flow. And there's a lot of things that are actually being able to integrate when you're not aware of all the other things that are happening around you and you're just working on your art. Um, it's actually just like uh, art as therapy, as they call it. You don't even have to call it art therapy. That just, art therapy would mean there's another person witnessing your process. Art as therapy is um, you making art and it being a cathartic 
experience for you. That's, I think the human condition, it's like a, a primal thing that humans need to do. It's like part of their nature to create and make something out of nothing. And um, I think a lot of people have kind of gotten away from that, uh, being judged at maybe an early age about like needing to be good at art. Um, and so I, yeah. I don't know, it's kind of painful to think about that way, but. <laughs> I, really, I, I appreciate that distinction. I'll, I'm gonna use that actually, because you know, I've, I, I've often thought that making art is therapeutic because it was and it is for me. So yeah. just, mm -hmm. just because, and, and trying to put that into words, but to respect what an art therapist does. Um, yeah. I really appreciate that there's art as therapy and then of course art therapy. Um, yeah, yeah. Art therapists don't own art, you know? It's, uh, <laughs> it's So it's just like confusing, I think, for people to know what to say about it and like still feel like they know something because people do know a lot about art if they make art themselves and um, sure. don't always need another person to like reflect back to them or like challenge them on what they're making but um or what that you know might represent for them but that's really could... interesting um so taking back taking us now to our present moment uh, mm -hmm. so this is this has been traumatic for a lot of people i think you know certainly people that are people are most people are naturally social right and being forced to be in your house can actually you know can have a uh a terrible effect on a person's psychological yeah. health. Um, and I think, you know, obviously the reality of our current situation is people have lost their jobs. Uh, the, the economy is um, in, in pieces. People are anxious. People are, uh, some people are afraid. I, I think there's, there's a lot of, there are a lot of factors in our current environment that are, are making this really um, a, a traumatic experience. So, um, if you could give some tips, what, what do you think, what are some things that people could do to at least increase their wellness and their well-being mm -hmm. during, during this time? Could you, could you identify one or two things? Um, yep. Um, I think if there, I mean, it's really hard in this situation to, especially if you, you know, you used to go to your job every day and that was like your motivating factor for getting out of the out of your bed in the day like that's um this is going to be really difficult and a lot of this is this time in your house is requiring you to be sort of self-motivated if you are going to do anything um and so if there's any way you could create like something consistent about your day um consistency is something that will help uh, a trauma brain or an anxious mind um, know what to expect and know what's going to happen next um, so that you don't have to feel scared about you know how the day might go or the next moment um, and to be fair like none of us really know like what's going to be happening but you can do small things uh, for yourself as like a sort of compassion towards yourself uh, to try to take care of yourself in a little way that you can. So like something I have been trying to do is um, make a hot cup of tea in the morning and go walk around my neighborhood uh, before everybody gets up and there's, there's like nobody out there. And so just go on a quiet little walk in the morning to kind of prepare myself for the day, I guess. Um, also, um, you know, having, like I said, having some compassion for yourself if it doesn't work out. Like if your plan doesn't happen how you thought would work best, like it's okay. Uh, like you said, like none of us have really done it living like this to this extreme in our lifetime. Most of us anyway. Um, so not knowing how to do it well is kind of expected, I would think. Um, and um, most of us ha probably haven't had to live with this level of ambiguity before. Um, so, uh, taking some time to breathe <laughs> and just, uh, figure out, um, what you can do in your life that you already like to do, or, um, that can help you kind of be present in the moment, 
Mm -hmm. um, that'll help kind of ease some of the anxiety that might be happening. I, I, I really appreciate that. I mean, it's hard because all of our routines are disrupted, right? And yeah. suddenly too, like, you know, there, it's not like there were, was an easing into this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where we could make up, like prepare ourselves personally. And so, yeah. you know, it, it, it can be, it can be anxiety producing. I think, you know, that's one of the things that art can, can teach us, I think, mm -hmm. is how to navigate ambiguity. Um, yeah. Because artists do that. So many yeah. artists do, not all of them, obviously, but mm -hmm. many artists do that fairly naturally. And yeah. so, um, yeah, it, it can be, I think, a lesson learned there. Um, so, so really, really appreciate that. Okay, yeah. so I'm, I'm a parent. Mm -hmm. There's an additional issue here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> go to school. So their, their routine yeah. is disrupted and they're actually, you know, managing better than I thought that they would with um, online schooling. Mm -hmm. I think there's, so there's layers of anxiety, right? There's the, the chil children's anxiety. Um, the yeah. world is, is now a scarier place, right? And also they can't go to school and know that there's, um, they know the reasons why, right? Like there's this virus um, and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have parents who are now trying to work if they are fortunate enough to have a job, right? Um, then also facilitating their children's learning and making sure that they're on task. So it's, you know, it's, it's creating household environments that are much different. And, mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, I think, um, I think it would be helpful just to know, um, you know, what are, are there specific things that you think parents and children should be doing at this time? I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if this is your area of expertise. Like I, you mentioned working with families, so I bring it up. I just thought, yeah. You know, are, yeah. Is there, are there things? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's always things, but that doesn't mean you have to do them all. Um, I think, um, you know, I don't, I don't know how old everyone's kids are and um, depending on the age of kids, um, they could be taking on different roles in the family during situations like this, like um, like small little like toddlers and whatnot, they are gonna, um, well, I should say this first before I say anything. Um, so kids, um, their nervous systems regulate off of their caregiver. So it's a uh, mirror neurons if you've heard of mirror neurons, they're um, something within your body and within your um, vagus nerve uh, that are able to help another person that you're interacting with recognize how you're feeling without having to really verbalize anything. It's just like an energy field. And so kids are doing that all the time with their caregiver and that's how they recognize what safety is and when there isn't safety and what the relationship is, uh, what's the state of the relationship at the moment. Um, sure. And that's not to like put an extra burden on parents. I'm just wanting to like let you know that that is just the basic um, way that kids regulate uh, when they're in a situation where they have a caregiver. <clears throat> um, sure. And so, and that speaks, that speaks to like, you know, making sure that us as parents are taking care of ourselves, right? So we're not, we're not um, necessarily inadvertently um, making our kids more anxious, right? Like, yeah, yeah. There's, there's definitely that element to this, I would say. Yeah, and, and uh, I think it's important too, like if you are anxious and you're the parent, it's okay to let your kids know that you're feeling anxious but it's also not your kid's job to help you feel less anxious um, as the adult. You're the one that is supposed to take care of the kid, I would say. <laughs> um, right. In these situations is where things can get kind of skewed in relationships. Um, if we're with each other all the time and we're all stressed, there's not anybody probably in the family that's not feeling some kind of um, stress during this situation. So, um, just um, kind of learning how to be transparent with each other and honest um, 
and just maybe learning how to give each other space and that you still love each other. You just need a little time to be you for a minute so you can gather. Um, and with little kids, uh, like toddlers, um, playing with them is how they recognize how the relationship is going and letting them um, act out whatever feelings are happening with their toys. That's, um, and if you can play along with them and like let it happen, um, it's, it's, that's how they're learning to integrate their own feelings. Um, uh, that in and of itself is really interesting, I think. Um, just thinking about, uh, you know, this opportunity that we have, again, if we're lucky enough to be at home with our kids mm -hmm. at this time, right? Like, um, thinking about how we use that time and how we interact with our kids. And the suggestion is a little bit of playtime, uh, right? A little bit of, of theatrical playtime and yeah. a little bit of um, uh, expressing ourselves and how, how we're feeling and learning how to do that. So, mm -hmm. so that we're yeah. not, um, yeah, inadvertently elevating the anxiety in the household. Yeah, I would say, yeah. Okay. Well, good. I appreciate that. Um, so, uh, any other advice that you wanted to that you wanted to give that you wanted to close with? Um, um, I would say it's okay if you don't have a plan, and you don't know what you're gonna do next in the world. Um, and to just to just be present is enough. At this point, okay. um, people are really resilient and. We wouldn't have gotten this far in life as a species if we <laughs> couldn't survive difficult things. So I think this is not going to last forever and we can do this. <laughs> and thank you for being, for being present, um, Josie. And thank you to everyone, anyone who's watching this. Um, we really appreciate your time. Um, I'll, I'll end with just a, a few thoughts. Art is the creativity, wellness, inspiration, and hope that we all need right now. And people turn to the arts in times of crisis. And um, that makes it difficult when, we're, um, when our actual facilities are closed. And so doing these virtual conversations is such a gift. Um, and speaking of gifts, um, I hope that everyone considers a gift to Plains Art Museum's Let, Let's Get Through This Together campaign to ensure that the museum can thrive in the future. Go to plainsart.org support to give a gift of any amount um, and be a part of the Plains Art Museum support community. There's also a link in the, in the comment section below. So this is just a tidbit. This is, um, uh, we were so blessed to have you with us, Josie. Um, thank you for being with us and sharing and helping us get through this together emotionally and um, psychologically. Yeah, thank you for having me.